Hello and welcome to Fit Conversations. I'm Anthony Payton, your host, and tonight we have a special guest with us, Kenya. It's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I just, I, I, you know, I, the more I sit down and talk to you, the more excited I am about all that you're doing. I mean, a plethora of things that you are engaged in and doing them all well. Uh, Kenya and I met uh, about, what, six months ago, maybe? Yep. About six months ago, I, as many of you know, was, was doing all the, the graphics here at the church, and I, was, I, I needed fresh eyes, and, and Kenya has started doing it and doing an outstanding job. But before we get into that, tell, me, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Kenya Garris, and I've been in the Fort Wayne area for about five years now. Um, I'm originally from North Carolina, and um, coming here, we launched a graphic design firm, and I serve as the creative director. Um, so I bring together artists and editors and creative ideas to entrepreneurs, um, nonprofits, organizations to help them launch new books, launch new businesses, products, um, or even have a rebrand like you had yourself. Amen. Amen. And, and does a wonderful job at it. Uh, now, you, you, you're actually from Winston-Salem. Yes. That's right. And you went to a historical black college there. Yes. Um, I graduated from Winston-Salem State University um, and also went on to study at Salem College. Um, but my experience at Winston-Salem State was very rich. Um, and that's where I met my partners. We, as we graduated and grew on, we were able to bring all of our our talents and gifts together to launch a business that serves others and allows us to execute our passions every day. So tell us the name of your firm. Um, BKX Graphic Design Studio. Um, and we've been here in the Fort Wayne area launching businesses um, from North Carolina to California to the local area, just all over. We've seen a lot of, a lot of growth. Now, now that, that, that allows me to ask you this question, because I, 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 prior to COVID, not many churches were doing much with uh, their social media presence. You know, I, 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 I tease a couple of my pastor friends. I said prior to COVID, you know, we spent more time uh, cursing social media than realizing the potential of it. And I think in many ways that we, we miss some of the, the young gifts that are in the body, who, who knows how to use it and, and, and how to use it for the glory of God and want to do things in an excellent way. Tell me, what, have you seen any move from churches, African-American churches, churches in general, if you would, that, that, is, that is embracing this new medium of social media, et cetera? Um, definitely, definitely. Um, as BKX Studio, we really honed in on the nonprofit sector okay. um, because during COVID, a lot of nonprofits lost funding. They weren't able to serve the communities in which they constantly show up for um, every day. And so we were able to take that model of building community around nonprofits and introduce that into um, the church. And with that, we were able to take marketing concepts of identifying your target audience, wow. of um, identifying goals that you want to reach in your nonprofit, and figuring out ways that we can implement strategies to talk to the community that you already serve every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, the tech industry and the um, age of the metaverse, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And we have to figure out how to take the good from these things that are leading us into the forefront of the future. And if we can um, control our own narratives online, if we can build communities that empower and support, mm -hmm. we can counter some of the negativity we do see online. Mm -hmm. Some of the, um, it's a lot of research coming out about the negative impacts on our children mm -hmm. um, due to the internet. And if we can modify and show up and produce content that empowers, inspires, and brings our community together, and it's gonna benefit everybody. Now, now you said something that is very important, produce content, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and a pastor or, or a leader in a not-for-profit context uh, is producing 
content. Mm -hmm. Every time he or she takes the mic or, or, or does something for leadership in, in the house, in, in, their, in their church or in their not-for-profit organization, they are literally producing content. But there's a difference between producing that content and putting that content online in a way that it, it attracts views. Mm -hmm. What, what would you say it takes for that? Um, I think that we, we have to execute something I call social listening. Okay. And that is when we look at other industries and what's working in that space and figure out how we can tweak that and make it work in our industry, mm -hmm. in our space, mm -hmm. to show up for the people we know are there. And we know that our congregation is online. Everyone has a cell phone, everyone is engaged. But if we can take that little clip that got a good rise out of the congregation on Sunday and note that, and bring it back around on Tuesday wow. to keep our congregation inspired, to keep them steadfast on what we have decided as our community, as our church, mm -hmm. is our goal. Mm -hmm. um, whether it could be a large community goal um, of like eradicating hunger, or it, it can be a mind shift that you're trying to introduce to a congregation. But every time you're scrolling, you're taking in content. Mm -hmm. And if the church is constantly putting out positive content that showcases what we do in the four walls of the church, it then gives it power outside of the four walls of the church so that these messages can keep going on and, and hopefully become timeless, viral um, elements that we, that we constantly go to for inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, if someone is feeling low and down, if they know that the church is constantly posting yes. on their Instagram yes. page, on yes. their Facebook page, yes. um, if they want, oh, what, what was that scripture pastor yeah. said? Yeah. They can go back and pull up that content. Yeah. That creates value. Yeah. And, um, and that's what we want. We want people to feel connected yeah. inside of the church. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can take that connection and that relationship, and it's always in your pocket, yeah. that's how we create people that aren't just members, but they're advocates for our brand. Yes. They're advocates yes. for our mission. Yes. And they yes. become disciples that carry on the word. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the ultimate goal, is to have um, the little pebble you drop continue to radiate in the lake, you know, just like oh, it can yeah. spread. I like that, I like um, that. And, and, th and that's what we can do yeah. with social media. Wow. So it's like while you're sleeping, you know, it's like somebody's getting preaching. inspired by the word, you wow. know. Wow. And, and if we can just galvanize people and get them to view the social media as not this toxic thing you need to delete every two weeks or whatever to get your peace back, um, we can look at it as a place where I am seeking empowerment, mm -hmm. I'm seeking peace, I'm seeking solace. Every morning I wake up and go on and open this app, I'm seeing a prayer from the pastor. Right. I'm seeing right. a journal thought, yes. you know? so. If I see those journal thoughts for three weeks straight, one day I might open up my journal and start writing. Yes. And yes. then take that message yes. and now it's actionable, it's yes. part of my life. We, we have experienced, you know, I, 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 I periodically I go, go back and, and, and look at how certain videos are doing, et cetera. And, 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 and we're in February, Black History Month, but I went back to, to our watch night service because we started this new series on and, 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 uh, December 30th you know, that you graphically put together for us. <laughs> and, and that watch night service has been seen by over 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and, and you know that how they rank that and all that stuff like that. But that's 10,000 people that we didn't have in this place. Yeah. Uh, that's 10,000 people in some way or another, shape or form, will share that with someone else. Mm -hmm. Are, and, and, and they will see it and they will be encouraged and they will be inspired. So I, 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 I think that creative people, this is what I say, I've said this to a few, a few friends about it. I think the creative people in our churches, the, the, the video people, the, the graphic peoples are, are, are the new superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think this era that we're living in uh, demands them to show up. You know, and, and, and it is incumbent upon us as pastors and leaders to, to see those faces there, those gifts there in that congregation and, 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 and set something up, set up a culture mm -hmm. 
where they feel like they are seen, their gift can be used and, and they can use it for the glory of God. You know, we have people around here working behind the scene when it comes to these cameras and stuff like that. You know, this would not be possible if it wasn't for them. And, uh, and the things that we did throughout COVID would not have been possible if it wasn't for them. Now, they may not be seen on the stage in an interview with me, but they are seen, yeah. <laughs> you know. And I think we have to do everything, everything we can to tap into that creativity that's there. And that's why, and you helped us with this, we're, we're starting that, new, that series next month dealing with creative for more, gifted for more rather, gifted for more. And, and I believe that there is a vacuum sometimes in our churches when it comes to cultivating the various gifts in the church in order for the church to reach more people. Now, you not only do graphic arts, <laughs> that's one, one facet of all the things that you do. You, you, you also are part of a community garden and, and those kind of things. Yes, um, in the local area here, we saw a need um, after the George Floyd assassination, we saw a need um, internally for us to show up for our community. Mm. And in serving that need, myself and um, my garden partner, Mariah, um, we came together on a vacant plot and started planting vegetables and herbs and fruits for the community. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going into our third year, we're going into planning now, um, but we're going into our third year with the goal of optimizing our output. Wow. So um, we were supplying local food pantries with fresh produce um, and just things you need in the space of showing up for those that are in need. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a pantry full of cans, we provided can openers. We provided ways for you to heat the canned goods um, it's along with fresh produce. And that was our goal of having fun, showing up for an issue that is plaguing our community, um, which is food deserts, lack of fresh fruits yes. and vegetables, yes. um, unhealthy, diets and lifestyles and we wanted to just combat that directly and head on and we've been able to have fun and um, give to the community in a way that has been organic and um, really inspiring and even just to kind of bounce off of what you were saying with having that gift mm -hmm. that is something I find that we are as like the creative director of BKX, that is one thing that I really find valuable. Okay. That planning stage. Okay. Whether you're planning a community garden, planning a workout, or planning your product launch, mm. having um, creative minds, having a checklist, um, having a format in which you can go through to make sure you're crossing your, your T's and dotting your I's, it helps make everything better. So yeah. um, in all facets, yeah. Yeah. I'm a checklist person. Yeah. I'm just like yeah. trying to pull together the resources we have to tackle the issues that, that plague our community or the issues that our clients come up with. I, 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 I never forget on that same note, I was in, in the Dominican Republic and I had went there for to, to chill and the rest. And, and when I arrived there, the, my, my, my accommodations weren't ready, but they were getting it ready. And, and uh, they told me I had to pay taxes. I said, well, I done paid all the that I'm gonna pay. And, and I'm not paying anything else. Uh, well, they said, well, you, you didn't pay the taxes on the United States side, so we have to take them on this side. I said, that sounds like a personal issue. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I said, where's the manager? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm exercising this US <laughs> disposition. Now, where's the manager? I wanna talk to the manager. And so, I, so this, this very attractive Af African-American woman comes out I, and, 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 and I, I said, well, what is it that you got me paying this money again? I didn't pay. I, I've paid, I bought the tickets. She said, well, you didn't pay it on the US side, so you have to pay it on this side, and it's more. And she said, I, I said, I'm not doing that. She's, I, I'm, and she said, well, Mr. Payton, you have to respect the process. <laughs> And that stayed with me because I had taught that principle for years. And here I am violating the very heart of that principle 
by not respecting the process. And planning is respecting the process. It is the process by which you, which the dream or the vision that you have becomes reality. Mm -hmm. Sitting down, crossing those T's and dotting those I's. And so you, your, your firm as a whole has helped me in that process when it comes to social media uh, uh, hosting and, 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 and development and all that. And so you, your firm can help others do that as well. Definitely, okay. definitely. Okay. Um, we like we've gone through from even launching the website online mm -hmm. of just simply laying out all the possibilities mm -hmm. on a web map and let's figure out how you want to show up for your community mm -hmm. and different ways that we can do that because the future is technology is going to become more integrated in our everyday lives yes, already is and yeah. It, yeah. exactly yeah. and it's like if we already have um a system we know that works mm -hmm. of blogs are really working well yeah. here. If we pair that with social media, if we pair that with the community you already have, tapping into them, we can bring that synergy across your whole company, um, your whole movement, mm -hmm. um, whatever, whatever you are developing. Mm -hmm. And so that goes into the process. Yeah. Um, we work with a lot of self-publishing authors as well. And that can be a very um, tedious process, yeah. um, getting your manuscript from something you wrote mm -hmm. to sending out to print to the publisher. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of checks and balances there. Yeah. And so sometimes it helps where <clears throat> you do have that weekly meeting with a creative director that is reaching out to the graphic design artist for you, emailing the publishing company, um, just making sure you're checking off, making sure you have your social media pre presence prepared before your launch, mm -hmm. making sure that if someone buys your book, you have a flawless thank you email to send them immediately, wow. Wow. Um, uh, like after they press checkout. Yeah. Yeah. And these are the things that fine tune community. Yes. Um, yes. Whether it's a for-profit or a non-profit system, um, if someone is, is watching Kayak live mm -hmm. and you're preaching, but I can um, make sure they have a welcome, mm -hmm. you know, in the live, it brings that community of, I'm virtual, but I still feel like Pastor okay. Peyton sees me. Yes. Yes. I still yes. feel like I'm yes. part of this community. Yes. Yes. Um, and so showing up for people in that way helping people lay out the list and refining the process and sometimes calming people down and reminding them it's a process. It's, a process. It, it's, it, it's an important part because entrepreneurship, um, having a new idea or vision mm -hmm. that you have the responsibility to get out to people, that's a, that's a lot yeah. to have on you. Yeah, and if reading, you can refine that, it can be great. And that same note, I was reading uh, just before, or earlier today, so a report from Barnard that said that African-American pastors are spending about 70% of their time vision casting. Mm. Vision casting. Mm. Now, think about the implications of that. Now, so if you're only spending 70, if you're spending 75% of your time casting the vision, what are you doing with the other hours? How how are you making sure it becomes a reality, et cetera? But that's a whole nother that's a whole nother show. <laughs> but I but I will say this. Okay. Um, in our this just behind the scenes and working on your project, when you sent over your thesis mm -hmm. for your series, mm -hmm. we all come together and we read it and we throw out ideas. Yeah. And and that's how we get to the logo. Yes. So in some ways it's like, oh, it's a logo, but it's like, yeah. no, creative minds have come together yeah. and we've taken your thesis mm -hmm. that you have written out and we're trying to take that and recreate something visual yeah. that will bring in your target audience, that, will, that is on the cutting edge of what we know is next in design. Mm -hmm while holding true to your vision and your mission. And we, we've gone back and forth like, yes, tweak this, no, you know, but together um, it, it creates a beautiful synergy. Yes. And yeah. it's like um, a, a logo or your video that you're putting out, it takes a like a background of people and creatives sometimes to take your vision from this is just an idea here to wow this is flourishing yes. wow yes. this is taking off and if we can offload that stress where you can create more mm -hmm. 
that benefits everybody. And that is the, I think that, that's why I was thinking about that 70% of the time that mm -hmm. is spent doing casting vision and, mm -hmm. and, and they need a team. But I want to come back to the, the garden piece because okay. we just, we just went around. Let's come back to the garden. You know, because you were sharing with me that the genesis of that. And the, one of the interesting parts of that for me was, uh, and you mentioned it a few moments ago, was providing a can opener. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about providing canned goods for a person that, that doesn't, that's homeless perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, we don't think about that very practical thing. Well, do they have a way of opening this yeah. can? And, and, and your, your, you and your community garden partner provided that for in different spaces and places. I think that um, just implementing some things that I've learned, sometimes you have to sit back and watch okay. what you're participating in. So in, in providing fresh produce to the pantries, we would put the food in there and then we'd come back in an hour come back in two hours mm. and just watch and see who is coming in the pantry, what are they doing, how are they navigating it. Um, and that allowed us to think past of, oh, we've done our service. Wow. Wow. That's what we want to do. Wow. Instead of just showing up and doing what we want to do, we sat back and assessed the need by social listening. Mm -hmm. And through that, we realized like, oh, there are holes here. Mm. There are holes in this system. Fort Wayne has a beautiful initiative of having these pantries that are on the corners that are beautifully decorated by different artists and they have food in it, but there's nothing fresh and there is no way for them to open it. Mm -hmm. And we noticed too that they are putting, some people are putting meat. And so it's like if we can bring in uh, the green beans, the radishes, if we could put, like we put tomato starts wow. out there one time wow. and people took the starts. Wow. So it's like that, that is what really pushed it over to being something that was just like, I'm doing this because I want to show up for people in this way. So let me sit back and assess what is needed and then show up in, even, in an even greater way because my goal is to feed people and it's not to get the glory from the community garden. It's not to, to do anything outside of that. It is, that is a real problem for me. Mm. Like, I, I, it, it bothers me that the idea of food insecurity plagues our community in that way. Mm. Um, and I just really think the idea of like that social listening, uh, we were kind of stalking the pantries just to make sure that everything was received properly. And that you were doing what was needed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you all, now, you all had a vacant lot. I and mean, you correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. There was a vacant lot behind her house or close to her home. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you all went and cleaned the lot. Yeah. Yep. It was, um, we found some interesting things back there. <laughs> it was, uh, we cleaned it out. It was um, a lot of debris. It just been an area that wasn't used. Mm -hmm. um, it honestly looks like an old two-car garage space, like okay. that was the foundation, okay. and we dug that out. Um, we really have, just in our research of, it's, it's February now, and we're already researching and planning, but we know that soil health is important. Mm. Um, in our lifetime of 50 to 60 years, we know that the top soil on our planet is compromised. So we partnered with a local stable and was able to bring in um, compost and really? able, yeah, because we don't just want to impact the land. We want the land to be healthier. Um, so you have to understand like, when America went through the Industrial Revolution, we started having factories, um, it removed a lot of the animal work and the compost and the byproducts, the manure from the animals. Mm -hmm. So we have these big swaths of land that are farmed under monocrops, where you have like 10 acres of corn versus having corn, zucchini, green beans, tomatoes, chickens and cows, because that creates an ecosystem where everything feeds and takes from each other. So the whole free range. Yeah. yeah. And so we are not at the level of a farm yet, yeah. but where we are, we are serving the soil the best we can. 
we are um, bringing in compost, we are rotating our crops out. Um, we did the three sisters method, which is um, a tried and true way of growing um, corn, green beans and zucchini um, together. Um, and that is what we want to see. The three sisters method. Three sisters method. Heard. Yeah. So um, in one garden bed, we were able to grow corn, zucchini, and green beans. Okay. And they are able to exist and work together because you have one that's covering the ground. The green beans are going to grow up the stalk of the corn. Mm -hmm. And so it, it just provides, um, in a small space, you can optimize your yield. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's like if we... Our, the future is we're going to have to reimagine farming. We're going to have to reimagine how we grow, mm -hmm. how we eat, mm -hmm. how we import our foods. And I think that if we can grow more food, it, it just it brings something to the soul. Yeah. Like to plant a seed and then to watch that tomato grow. Yes. Yeah. And then it's like, it's time to pluck that tomato. Yeah. What am I going to cook with it? Yeah. And then your kids are helping you pluck the tomatoes and they're involved in the process. So now I have a five-year-old that's like, I want okra, mom. So your five-year-old is engaged in Oh, well. yeah. We bring, we bring our children to the community garden. Um, we both have kids. We, we bring them in the community garden. They, they are 100% involved. And that's something you said er earlier uh, when we were talking, uh, that it, it also facilitated your physical consciousness, the health consciousness. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I really, I really have a, a passion for fitness and I have a passion for gardening, but I, I did not know that I had a passion for gardening. Okay. And when I went out into the garden and planted a seed and saw that I could bring forth heads of romaine and heads of romaine and grow tomatoes and radishes and rainbow um, okra and um, heirloom tomatoes, all these different fruits and vegetables that I haven't even um, really liked in my <laughs> yeah, whole yeah, life. Yeah. But when you go through the process of growing it, it becomes interesting. You know, uh, just to see the uh, the flower of the okra and understand like, oh, okay, this is how zucchini grows. Mm. And this is how, like, this is edible. You know, these things, it becomes interesting. So now it brings me into the space of, I wanna cook with it more. Mm. I wanna cook with live things. I wanna incorporate these things. So now I have 13 cucumbers that are all a foot, or a foot long. I'm gonna pickle. I'm going to make pickles. I'm going to pickle some things wow. now, you wow. know. Um, and we were able to create a garden community. Of um, Another lady was in Oregon. She has a homestead. Um, we have another local gardener here. Um, she was growing loofah. And even, like, I didn't even know you could grow a loofah that you wash with until I got into gardening. Wow. And um, it just was a way for me to find that joy in living fruits and vegetables. It was able, it was a way for me to find the joy of, oh, I'm carrying five, a five gallon bucket, you know, and it's a hundred degrees. <laughs> so those squats I'm doing in the squat rack or those, you know, the sled pushes I'm doing in the gym, oh, they matter now, they matter you now. know, cause I'm bent over for four hours weeding out my garden space. It's like, it translates wow. and, um, wow. I was just able to find um, a place where I found a gift inside of me that I didn't even know I had. Mm -hmm. And um, we spoke about that before of just, I'm in a place right now going into this garden season of being thankful, being thankful for the unknown because seven years ago I wasn't gardening. And it's like, well, what is it that I'm not doing now that is an unspoken, untapped gift that I can bring into fruition in my future. Um, I, I just really enjoy the impact of, of growing things, like oh. from nothingness to something, and then being able to give that to those in need. Um, it just really, it, it really brought a lot of joy to last season for us. And this season, we are all about <coughs> taking our acreage and figuring out how we can grow the most amount of food as possible so that we can continue to show up 
um, for those in need, those we feel like need the produce. <laughs> so tell me now, you, you, you're this graphic designer, you, you, you're a fitness guru <laughs> uh, and, and gardener. How did, all, how did all these worlds come together? I mean, did you always envision yourself operating at this optimal level in these various arenas? Um, I really think I, I did not envision it um, at all because graduating <clears throat> and going on um, with graduate studies, I was a kindergarten teacher at a military academy. Wow. So um, I, I did not envision this for myself, but I really find joy in the stages in my life. And I know that some things are only for a season. And if you are able to pick up the f key fundamental parts of a season coming to an end, you can carry that into your next season. Okay. So one of my most profound things that I've ever learned to do <clears throat> was teaching a child to read. Okay. And one of my main goals was, I wanna be able to go up under a bridge with a piece of chalk and teach a kid to read. And that is hard, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it, just going from someone not knowing the concept of a letter yeah. Yeah. to introducing the letter sounds, to getting into sight words, to sounding words out. So that process, once I, I worked up on an amazing reading interventionist um, in Winston-Salem, she was profound in my life because she gave me that gift of teaching me the process of how to teach a child to read. Mm. So I was able to take that process and implement it as a creative director. If anything, like if it's a problem with a child of like their fluency is low, so I'm going to create <clears throat> strategies and interventions to work on that one area of literacy or five areas of literacy. So I apply that to a business. If a business is looking to, um, they have um, maybe low conversion on their website. That means they're not getting the sales they're looking for. I'm going to figure out what strategies we can implement mm -hmm. to raise that one area in their business. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we lock that in, it may be something else and we'll put in strategies to raise that area as well. So I think in um, each season of my life, I've been able and given time, even though in that time it may have been uncomfortable, but I've had time to reflect where I can take the fundamentals of the season, of the lesson, and apply them to the next thing, to the next thing, and the next thing. So um, it was a time where I physically could not squat. Like, it was just like my hip hinge, like I had had a child, my hips were tight, um, my ankle mobility wasn't there, and I could not squat. And I just wrote a program for myself. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to teach myself how to do this. And then it evolved to me teaching others how to squat, how to find power in being a strong woman, how to deadlift and how to just take things to the next level, pushing your body. So showing tell, up them, tell, our, tell our audience how much, how much weight you deadlift. <laughs> <laughs> tell them. <laughs> um, so like, I, I honestly love the deadlift. Okay, okay. It's my favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite it. workout move. So I will say I put a lot of energy into it. So I'm going over 200 pounds, 135 to 200 pounds every time I'm deadlifting because I love the lift. Mm. I love the move. I love the idea of coming up on something that's on the ground, dead, static, mm -hmm. not moving, conducting my energy, executing, and releasing it back to a static place. <laughs> that, that empowers me. And then when I got in the garden, and I'm like, oh, our hose has yes. a hole in it. Yes. So we have to push this wheelbarrow of water across to the garden and dump it. It becomes functional and it's like, oh, okay, now these pull-ups I've been doing all my life, wow. uh, it makes sense. Now these deadlifts, they make sense. Mm. You know, even um, my ankle mobility, I'm on my knees planting seeds, it makes sense. And it's like any of the challenges um, we have, 
we just try to implement. I mean, we have great failures too in the garden. Um, last last year we had aphids and we bought ladybugs off the internet. You can buy ladybugs, they will ship you ladybugs. I didn't know that. And we let them go in the garden, local ladybugs, and they ate a few aphids, but they flew all away. <laughs> And we sat there with our ladybugs and just watched them fly out into the earth and eat a few aphids. But it's like, it's once again, we had a problem with aphids. Let's put in a strategy that's organic, natural. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, give it yeah, a shot, yeah, you know? Yeah. And the main thing is to have fun with it, yeah. you know? Now, there, there are going to be some young, no matter what color, woman out there. And they're going to hear your story. And, and it's and this is inspiring. Uh, what would you tell them to do if you were to say, okay, I need you to do three things? What would it be? Mm. Read, reading, and um, create a process of of things. I, I would I would say those are the important things. Um, at my lowest point in life, I came across the idea from Jim Quick of reading a book a week, and it changed my life. A book a week, and it sounds crazy, but once you do the math, it's seven days in a week, just take that, divide it, how many pages you gotta read every day, show up for yourself. A book a week wow. changed it. Wow. And then um, I paired, I, I just, I know what genre I like to read, so I, I counter that with listening to the genres I really don't like to read, okay. you know? But a book a week changed my life hands down. Wow. Because, and it's not something, like I, I'm not doing it now, now I'm casually reading. But at one of my lowest points in life, reading a book a week, it took me out of my life. It gave me inspiration, perspective. Um, I grew up um, with Maya Angelou being my, my god aunt but I never read any of her work mm. until I was an adult. And so like my whole childhood, I, you know, I grew up with Maya Angelou. Um, my grandmother was at the typewriter. I remember just after school, my grandmother's at the typewriter and Maya Angelou's just talking and she's just typing away. And so I started by reading every book Maya Angelou wrote um, and a book a week, it changed my life hands down. Um, the second thing is documenting your experience. You don't get a progress report in life. There's no teacher saying, hey, you did great this week, or ah, last quarter, you, you know, it wasn't great for you. So you have to do that for yourself. Wow. And I walk around, um, I don't have it with me here today, but I walk around with a clipboard. Mm. Um, and that comes from my teaching days, where I would just have a clipboard, taking notes, keeping up with the, the youth, and um, I have clip. I have a clipboard, and I document the things that I, I want to do, and I, I lay out what I've been doing, the things that are my goals. Every day, I need to read, meditate, and work out, and drink water. And drink but water. and drink water. <laughs> but it's like if I don't write it down, I can't cross it off, and I don't get that personal victory. Okay. And then I can go back in like five months ago and look at that list and be like, whoa, you, you, those, all those projects have launched, all these things have come to fruition. Uh, oh, that's closed out. Wow, that was really challenging for you. You didn't see the light there, but now it's over. What was it Socrates says? The unexamined life is a life not worth living. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So those are the two things, reading. What was the third? The third. Ah, uh, yeah, um, I would think having, I'm not going to say working out, but having some, something that brings you into yourself okay. physically, where you take the time, whether it's, um, uh, my grandmother is avid, I, uh, avid Tai Chi, um, participant. She, she loves her Tai Chi class, wow. whether it's, um, meditation, whether it's gardening, you know, something that brings you into yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's easy to overlook it, but you have to do the work sometimes to find yourself mm -hmm. and find what makes me feel mm -hmm. fulfilled. And for me, 
it's lifting weights, it's deadlifting, you know? So for someone else, it might be dance, yeah. it might be spoken word, it may be um, stand-up comedy, whatever it is that brings you into yourself, I think that I would go after that. Um, but in that, that's the hard one, the third one, that's the hard one. But if you could just start with reading a book a week just yes. to get those perspectives yes. yeah. and writing down yeah. every day, yeah. I do want to drink a gallon of water. Yeah, I, I journal. I, I've been journaling for years and it's helped me tremendously. I recommend it, you know, to everyone that, 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 that I, especially when I'm mentoring someone, I recommend that they do that without question. Even this a list. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even just making a list of how do you feel every, you know, how do you feel? What are your pros and cons? You know, I think that is empowering and that can maybe give you a little insight to what gives you fire, what like inspires you. And that way you can get that third component where you can really have something that nurtures you inside, allows you to go in and have that introspective space. This has been exciting. I appreciate your time. I thank you for it. Um, now, before we leave, we talked about the name of your company, but you haven't given out any information on how someone could contact yes. you. Yes, so um, bkxstudio.com is where you can visit our website. Um, we're actually going to have a, a launch checklist posted um, that you can download if you're launching a book, a product, um, if you just want to look at how we're going about the chain of commands. Mm -hmm. Just go on our website, bkxstudio.com, and you can download that digital checklist um, because you may have a gift inside and you don't know how to get it out. Yeah. Um, so whether it's a book and you need an editor, or um, if you have an idea for a class and you need to figure out what platform to show up on, yeah. Or if you want to, you know, have a character of yourself, yeah. you know, for something, illustration, uh, illustration yeah, 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 yeah. or anything that you want to bring to life. Um, we're able to connect people with creatives and that checklist can give you a little insight on what are some things to think about? What are some things to consider? So that will be available on our website um, for people to check out. And at any time, if you want to you know, get on a consultation call with myself or any of our artists or even our, our editor, we'd love, to, we'd love to reach out and you can contact us on our website. And that number, phone number, or just the website? Oh, uh, the website, okay. yep. Okay. You can submit a request there and okay. then from there, someone from our team will get back to you. Um, but that free resource, um, print it out and get to doing that hard work of that pencil and pad um, down on, on, you know, the grid of your vision, getting yeah. everything down. Well, you've helped me tremendously. The thank company you. has helped us tremendously. I thank God for the partnership. I, I know that going forth, uh, that God knew exactly what we needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, you, your company, your, your creative team has been our secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> well, <thank you> so <laughs> and I appreciate you. You have been listening to Fit Conversations, and our special guest today has been Kenya. I thank you for giving us a few moments of your time. I pray that you have a glorious day. <laughs>